Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and uh, in this video I'm looking at the Epson ET8550 and I'm going to print a long panoramic print on it. Now this is paper taken mm. off uh, roll, 13 inch roll paper and I'm going to feed it through and print an 800 millimeter page size here. Now I'll show different aspects of this but you do need to set custom paper sizes. So 13 inch by 800 millimeters is not a standard size. So it's something I've set on the computer. Now, depending on what software and what system you're using, uh, there are different ways of setting custom paper sizes. I have set custom paper size on the display here. So when I load it, it's set as a custom media. That's not necessary. You can override it with the software, but I find that setting a paper size on the printer is just something that reminds me to get double check everything. But anyway, let's load up some paper and see what goes. Um, here we go, I've cut this piece of paper uh, off a 13 inch roll, handle it carefully, uh, make sure your hands are clean before you do anything and try and avoid touching the uh, main print surface. Now I've lifted up the rear feed here, it's going to go through the rear feed here and there's a bit of a knack with paper if it's folded in getting it to load. Now, you may find that taking your paper, cutting it, leaving it flat on a table overnight or something just to remove some curl from it. Uh, this paper is a luster paper. It's a 275 gram luster paper. This one's from Photospeed in the UK. Um, there aren't many suppliers of 13 inch paper, roll paper. Uh, the Epson ones tend to be Epson Glossy, which is what I normally look at, but this one from Vote Speed is a luster, 275, so moderately thick paper. I've also got a cotton rag art paper, which I'll be looking at in due course for other types of prints. But this is basically making a large photo print. We'll pop that in there. It it needs a bit of straightening up. Uh, when you do uh, when you do cut your paper, make sure you get a nice neat edge on it. Um, I measure paper out like this by putting it on a paper on a, a table where I've used masking tape to just mark out the lengths I want. So I can just roll it out flat, cut it. Good long scissors, wallpaper scissors, something like that will get you a, a fairly neat edge. Does help if you get a neatish edge. But anyway, this paper, um, I'm going to have to hold it here for the time being, but I'll just do this, because large lengths of paper flop all over the place. This printer, according to the settings here, takes up to two meters. A two meter length of paper needs a little bit more care than I'm doing here for doing, but this is just showing the principle of making a large print. So we've got this, it's set for user-defined paper size, which I've done that, which is fine. Now, I don't want to hang this over the back because the weight will push on it. So just temporarily, I'm going to just rest it there. Don't want to leave it there in case both ends get sucked into the paper when it starts printing. Just makes it a bit easier to go from the printer here. Now I'm using uh, Photoshop here. Um, I've set paper size 329 by 800 millimeters. The image I've sized to the size I want for this, with a bit of a border. You can't print uh, borderless for ones this size. Borderless is covered, but only on certain types of uh, certain types of sizes of paper. Uh, I've happened to have a profile I've made for a paper that is virtually the same as this, so I'm using that color profile. But anyway, that's the settings that I'm using. So do that, and then I will print. Now, given the size of the image. Um, it's going to take it a while to process. I'm just going to have this here, hold this. I'm just trying to make it a nice easy feed. Uh, obviously if the paper is straight and you come up with some other way of mounting it. If you're doing shorter bits of paper, say AA4 panoramic or something like that, it's easier to feed. But I picked this because I knew it's going to be a bit awkward and really just to show that you can do it with this printer. Printer's starting to make a few noises. Mm -hmm. 
there we've got the paper has fed and I can hear that the paper seems to be feeding through okay. Now with a luster paper like this, I can now just leave that there and it should feed through quite well. Now I'm printing this at the sort of quality setting, so that's like a medium setting, which for a photo print like this is perfectly okay. Uh, the high quality setting does make a slight difference with some images, but not in this instance with this particular paper here. So we'll find out in a moment what's going to come out. But uh, from the profiling, I know that it works pretty well with it. And here comes the print. Well, that looks pretty good. As you can see, it's got no trouble feeding through here. I say it would do up to two meters. Um, so two meters by 13 inches uh, is quite long panoramic prints. Now I'm printing this image. It's actually a much higher resolution image that you would normally need for a print this size because it was made from multiple stitch mega, uh, 50 megapixel images. Uh, it's a harbour scene down in Cornwall that some you may have seen I've used in other printer tests and things. But uh, it's a nice colour image and it's a nice panoramic size. Um, I print at as high a native resolution as I can manage. And this is actually the file that's going to this is I believe at this size works out at just under 600 pixels per inch of real resolution. You don't need to resize it too much. Uh, I don't bother with uh, sizing it to any sort of optimal uh, value or anything. Large prints like this are meant to be viewed from a reasonable distance. Um, I'm going to say that if you are somebody who habitually looks at their prints at this distance to see what they look like, then you're somewhat missing the point. A picture like this is designed to be viewed from a distance and have enough detail so that if people walk up to a modest distance away from it, they should notice no loss of detail. Um, printing at the absolute finest detail is no more than just proving to yourself that you can print at high detail. Great, you can get a magnifying glass out and you can see how fine detail how you've printed. Nobody else is going to do that, nobody cares. That's always an important thing to do when, remember, when you're making your own prints. Who are you doing the prints for? But anyway, I've done a lot of other videos looking at making large prints and I've done a whole series of them about sewing prints uh, where the most important bit is not what you think about your print, it's who you're going to sell it to and what they think about it. So this is Paul Flevin in Cornwall. Um, I would expect a print like this to sell for a whole better in somewhere like Cornwall, near where it's local, than it would here. I'm in Leicester in the middle of England and, um, well, if somebody knows Paul Clevin they might be interested in it, but um, it's not. I'm doing because I went on holiday here and uh, this particular image sums up the look of what I felt about when I was walking around the harbour one evening. I should say late afternoon since it's uh, not that dark, the sun hasn't set yet. Well, detail and colour are all looking fine. One other thing is that when you're testing prints after you've done them, do leave them dry for a bit uh, because there are changes. Some papers, some ink types do change slightly on drying. So uh, don't criticise your colours too much uh, first thing when it comes out of the printer. It shouldn't change much, but it may well change a bit. That's why when I make colour profiles, I print the test targets, leave them overnight before doing the actual profiling. So this is uh, using a custom profile that I've built. Uh, when I have the full review of this printer uh, done, which will be the written review, that's the long detailed review, it'll have a list of all the papers remember to catch your prints when they come out. It'll have a full list of all the uh, papers that I've made profiles for and they'll be available for non-commercial use if anyone wants them. But anyway, uh, here we have one, let me just hide behind it, one panoramic print 
of the harbour at Port Leven. So there you go. Uh, no problem in making panoramic prints on the 8550. So uh, hopefully this has been of some use. Uh, if you're interested in the printer, uh, please do subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing more testing with this. And then I have a review, which I'll we'll do a video of, that will go along with the full written review as well. Because the written review is where I put the more technical stuff, the more detailed stuff that doesn't really fit in videos very well. So thank you very much.